Hello. I did a little bit of bug fixing, um, but I'm not going to do all of the bugs on camera because that would be incredibly tedious. Instead, I'm going to focus on implementing major things on camera, and today we're going to implement a message box. Basically, when we get some treasure from these things, we want it to pop up in the corner and say, Hey, you got some treasure, yay! Um, and that'll be the basis for our inventory, but it's easier than an inventory, so uh, you know it's, it's a better thing for us to start with. Here is our canvas. We've always had a canvas here. We used to have a little dot in the center. We used to have a lot of panels and stuff. It's just empty right now, but we are going to add a new panel and stick it off in a corner somewhere. That's, uh, there we are. I'm going to go ahead and set it to a, a flat 210 wide. No, that's not wide. Put it in the left corner, flat 210 wide. And that's just because it's a nice clean number for us uh, in terms of having to five pixel padding. And you can make it as tall or as short as you'd like. Now the key is the anchor is in the lower left, so it won't change size when we resize everything else. And there is uh, basically just um, one thing that we need to add to this, and that is a vertical layout group. So right now, this is, now contains something called a vertical layout group. And if you haven't played with that, you don't know what that is. This is a little bit touchy, so I'm going to be explaining it fairly slowly, and I hope nobody minds. We're going to start off by putting a button in, just for example's sake. You can see that the button has just been forced to be the same size as the whole panel. If we duplicate this button, you can see that they get split up to be the correct height all throughout the panel. And if we go back into the panel, we change it to 200 rather than 210, they all resize correctly. So the vertical layout group will automatically force these buttons to have a specific height uh, based on how much space is in the vertical layout group and how many buttons there are. We don't have to have that happen. We can, in fact, uh, stop the child expansion and then they will be whatever the default is. However, because these things were damaged uh, right off the bat, they don't have a default. So let's go ahead and recreate the button. And you can see that it's not, it's not behaving at all. What's going on? Well, the problem here is that what we need to do is, uh, if we want things to behave properly, we actually have to add something to the children as well as the parent. This is the vertical layout group, but we also need the layout element here in the, child, in the children object. Um, and this would allow us to make this whatever size we want it to be. Uh, now, if we add this to the panel right away, you can see that it still errors out. So what you need to do is you need to turn on the min and preferred sizes, and then we can just cut and paste these if we want them to be exactly the same size. So this is how we create a locked size. Now, why would you want to create a completely locked size if you're doing a vertical layout? Um, well, the answer is that it's best because uh, we are going to be controlling this Sorry, we're going to be putting in a lot of messages, and we want the messages to naturally scroll. So if we remove messages, time them out, they'll automatically fade up the rest of the messages below it, and that'll work great. Uh, now, we do have a situation where this message box uh, isn't, isn't making our button wide, it's just making our button in the right spot. We can turn off our button's preferred height and preferred width, or we can just turn on the force expansion of width and leave the force expansion of height off. But you'll notice that this was originally 210. Now why did I do that? Well that's because I like to have things 200 pixels wide. It's just sort of my um, my instinct. I don't know why. But we can just put a 5 pixel padding around it and it will be 200 pixels wide exactly. Of course we're not planning on using a button here. What we actually want to do is a panel with a text box in it. So let's delete the button and let's create another panel and uh, this panel we will go ahead and uh, just set its size to 200 and uh, 40 and you can see that it's way over here in the middle of nowhere and that's just because th th moving this around doesn't matter because it's gonna lock into the correct spot but that's because it's not the child of our uh, this is our, our message box it's not the child of our message box it's the child of our normal canvas and I do that just so that when we set up the layout element I don't have to worry about it being rescaled I actually don't know whether or not you need to worry about the min height. I don't think we do. Let's go ahead and just dis disable that and see whether or not it still works. Yeah, that's fine. So now we have a panel, and we can put text inside of this panel. And of course, we're going to want our text to be dark enough to see. Um, and 14 is really, really tiny. 18 is a little bit better. 
Uh, it's not... It, Ariel is a notoriously nasty... Um, uh, oh, wait, we should probably make it the size like this. There we are. Ariel is a notoriously nasty uh, thing to make small. It just is too spidery to read properly, and normally I would recommend that you change the font, but uh, I'm not going to fuss around with trying to distribute fonts, so instead I'm just going to make it bold, and that'll make it more legible. But you can see that this is barely text. I mean, it's like, um, it's like a one tiny line of text. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this until it's roughly the right size that we would like. And it looks like I made the message box too small, and it should be maybe 310. Something like this might be a little bit more uh, easy to read. And then in here in the text we can say, I have many words to say, and I say them on two lines. And our ideal is to make sure that both of those lines show up. So we'll just stretch this vertically, but we can't, can we? Because we're not using the same layout system. We're using this preferred height, and that means that this button has stopped working. Uh, and now if that bothers you, you can drag it back out and fuss with it, or you can just manually change the preferred height. Uh, 50 is too high, 45, that's right. So now we have the text box that we would like to put into our game. Later on we'll change the border uh, so that it's a little bit better. But if we were to change the name of this to text box, and then duplicate it a couple of times, you can see that they pop up nice and clean. Now if they fall off the bottom of the screen, uh, you can see that they start to cram, they start to compress, and we really don't want that. Uh, what we would like to have happen is we'd like for them to actually fall off the bottom of the screen. We're going to do that later. Uh, I'm, for now this, this, this is fine. Later on we will be using something called a scroll rect uh, and a mask, but we don't have to worry about that right now because uh, it's already been six minutes, seven minutes, and uh, I need to get at least a little bit closer to finished. So here in the scripts directory, we're going to create a new script, which we're going to call a message. And I'm actually not sure if this is a reserved class, if this is an already existing class or not. If it is, we'll rename it. Drop that on the text box. And in here we can say public float uh, duration, and we can just make that, uh, say, three seconds. That sounds good. And uh, public text Oh, there's no text, so well, that's because we have to add the UI as usual. Public text text box, and public string. I guess we don't even need that, just need to do it down here. So we're going to have a public void um, setup, I guess you can say. And then we're just going to pass it a string. And now that string will take rich text, so you can do red or bold or whatever you'd like, but you'd have to be careful uh, not to fall out of the text box. It's a very limited size. So here in setup, we're going to just say that uh, text box dot text equals message. Easy enough. We're also going to uh, uh, have a private variable or a protected variable, uh, which we will just call. Well, no. I was going to do it like that, but I think that there's a, the easier way to do it. We're not going to be doing any time scaling in this project, so it's okay if uh, if this just has an absolute time. Um, so we want to have a what do coroutines use? Uh, come on, fingers. I enumerator. I can never remember that. And then here in the I enumerator. We will go ahead and say um, yield return new. This is the magic phrase that I taught you a little while ago, uh, unless that was one of the things that didn't record. Uh, and then we just do a wait for seconds, and then we give it the duration. Now, the reason that I was a little bit worried about doing this is because if you alter the speed using the standard uh, time acceleration mechanics, this also gets extended or shortened. And that's often not what you want with text pop-ups. But this is this will work okay. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then at the end, we destroy game object. Pretty straightforward, right? So what we need is something that pops up messages uh, we're using this message box. Well, in order for that to happen, we need this message to actually be a prefab. So let's drop it in there. And we need to have something on this canvas or something on this message box that understands what it needs to do. It needs to be able to catch 
uh, the various messages that are being tossed our way. So we need another script and we're going to call this message box. And we're going to go ahead and drop that on our message box here. Now there's a lot of ways to make message boxes and other so these sorts of things work. Um, we're actually just going to do the, the most basic way possible. Uh, come on. There we are. We're going to put a static variable here and in the awake function we're going to set our active box equals this. And that will allow us to reference this from other places without having to search through the... We, don't have to, we won't have to search for it. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. But we also need to have something associated with it. We need to have a rect transform. Uh, and that will be the message target. Now the reason for that is that we need to know where we're putting our messages. We also need a public message message fab. And we're going to need a static, public static, uh, void message string message. And now what that requires us to do is to go into the active box and create that particular uh, message. So message m equals uh, message instantiate active box dot and then we need to get the message fab, right? So we're just instantiating the message fab, totally normal. We say total, uh, total we'd say m.transform.setParent uh, activebox.messageTarget and we don't keep the world position. Uh, I don't think that'll matter in this case because uh, I think that the, the vertical layout overrides whatever positioning was going on. And then we just say m message, uh, no m set up and we pass it the message so now we have this that which can be called from anywhere really really easily and the only thing left to do is to set up our uh, variables so grind 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 our message target is right here we are our own message target and our message fab is the prefab we just saved which we called text box which is a really bad name for it in retrospect let's go ahead and delete this and we're going to call this just um, message drop it in. There we go. So now that's ready to rumble, but we need to actually tell it to have messages at some point. Something needs to tell us some messages. What have we got that we want to have a message pop up for? Hmm. How about the loot? So here we say destroy game object. Before we destroy the game object, let's go message box dot message and let's say got loot. Pretty straightforward, right? save your scene and let's go ahead and kill us a slime now you notice that right now that is a that is an annoyingly large opaque thing we are going to be dealing with that as well we're going to make it uh, either invisible or make it fade away I haven't decided yet but either way it's fine for now just so we can see it Wah! did you see how crazy that went so what the what the, what went wrong here we got 10 billion messages um, We forgot to set it up properly. All right, so let's stop that. So what happened is that line crashed. Let me explain this because this is actually an important thing to understand. This line of, of code crashed, and it crashed here, so it never got to this line. So the game object was never destroyed, and in the next frame, it got called again, and it crashed again, and it was never destroyed. So you've got to be careful about that sort of thing. Here in loot, the problem is that we never set up... Oh, not loot. The, here in message, the problem is that we never set up the text box. So we'll just do that now. We don't even need to put it back in the scene. Now let's go ahead and try that again. Whap. Whap. Crunch. I'm going to chase you down. I'm going to get you, get you, get you. And there we go. Three got loot messages. And as they fade, poof. Now, in the now we can probably write a layout system that actually doesn't uh, pop so aggressively. Those did not slide into their new position as you might have hoped. Um, and the way we can do that real easily is now well, this is 15 minutes long, but okay, I'll do this anyway. Uh, what we can do here instead of destroying the message, we can shrink it. 
Um, so that's over. Not that's not in loot. That's in message box. Here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, a shrinking situation. We say transform local scale dot y, but that's not what we want, is it? Because we're not we're not actually using the local scale dot y or anything of the sort. What we are using, as you might remember, is this layout element. So what we're going to do is we're going to destroy that layout element, uh, not destroy it, but um, screw with it. like so. Uh, we can say LE and then we have access to all of the layout elements objects like flexible width and flexible height which are in fact th the, not the ones we want. We want the preferred height. So let's change our preferred height. Preferred height. And we're going to go ahead and just um, times equals 0.9F and then we're going to wait for seconds again but not the duration. How about that much seconds? Yeah. And then we're just going to go ahead and paste this a bunch. Now, this is not a very great way to do it. What we should do is we should create an animation and we should do all that stuff. Uh, I'm fine with it like this. Blunt force it. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Just have to kill off a slime. I should really reduce their hit points. Whap. Whap. and shoot 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 there you go so that'll do just fine we can also add in some transparency changes or whatever else we'd like uh, we could hide the loot when we start to shrink it so that we wouldn't actually see those that sounds like a great idea so right now when we are shrinking this height we're actually going to want to turn ourselves off so uh, to do that we want to hide our current object which is a panel so um, uh, hold on, it's an image, isn't it? Yeah. Image, image equals get component image. Image dot enabled equals false. Uh, we do have text in our children. Our, our sub objects have text. So, text. Uh, we actually already know it. Text box. Text box. Come on, try again. Dot enabled equals false and now that should hide us. So what we're doing is we're hiding the visual and then we're shrinking the actual box it contain, that contains it. So we've got an invisible box that's shrinking away and that should give us a nice sliding motion uh, as we'll find out shortly here. Yep, that looks good to me. So uh, that's all for today, and in tomorrow we might start to get to work on something more inventory related. I'll probably polish this just a touch while we're off screen, because I think I probably just want to make this invisible here. There. Alright, next time, something more inventory-like.